Hi, it's Mark from TrainSpark. And in this video, we're going to take a look at LearnDash's new product, LearnDash Cloud. So if you head to the LearnDash site, now uh, in, head to this Get LearnDash option here, what you'll find that is as of July 2022, there are two options here. So you've got the option that has always been around, the WordPress plugin, where you would be intended to download this plugin and install it on your own WordPress site that you manage the site for and the hosting and things like that. But they've now got this full site offering here called LearnDash Cloud, where they would take care of the hosting and the WordPress platform and everything here from, you know, LearnDash is already installed. You've got templates and plugins and what they call this is like hands-off maintenance. So this is intended for people who don't necessarily have a technical background and, um, you know, just want to get a, a platform to build their courses and, and sell them. So they, they don't want to have to uh, get their hands dirty with things like hosting and WordPress setup and different plugins and themes. They just want something quick and easy that they can just set up and, uh, you know, build the courses in. So it looks like this um, is aiming at the, the similar crowds to products like Teachable and Thinkific. Uh, that are aimed at course creators, just a, a platform that they can use to build their courses and um, you know, not have to worry too much about the, the technical aspects of it. So what I would say is you, you trade off some flexibility here. So the plugin you can install on your own platform and uh, you've got full control over how you host it, where you host it, what plugins you use, what themes you use and things like that. The full site might take away some of that, that flexibility, but as we understand, you can still install plugins and themes here. Um, and um, you, know, you, you might uh, find that there's, there's more flexibility than you, you realize with this. I would imagine uh, if you can install plugins, which you, we, we believe you, uh, you can, um, that makes things slightly more flexible even than Teachable and Thinkific, which would be very locked down. You know, you're kind of limited to the scope of the features that Teachable and Thinkific provide. So in terms of pricing, you know, $29 a month for LearnDash Cloud compares broadly with the lower end pricing of Teachable and uh, Thinkific. So these start at, you know, $39 and, and, and go up depending on you know how many users you've got on the platform and how many admins and things like that. So it's interesting to see that Lindash only has one price here. So, you know, if you had a platform with 20,000 users on, does that $29 a month still work out? You know, like, do, should uh, should that not be increasing over time? And would the um, you know, server resources be able to handle a, a larger site? That's something that isn't really clear here with, from this, um, this one price that we've got, whereas uh, Teachable and Thinkific have uh, you know, more options here and they talk about you know just the different things that you would get as part of those uh, tiers of pricing so that's one that we can you know see what happens over time i mean this is early days for, for learn dash cloud it literally only came out the week we're recording this video so things might evolve over time so learn dash cloud has its own page and uh, you know it's, it's got all of the features that you get as part of Lindash Cloud. And I think the key thing is that they're looking at this, um, you know, made easy sort of thing. You know, it's, it's, it's stuff that gets you set up and, and going really quickly. You know, it's, um, uh, and then they're leaning on some of the, you know, get paid because they want to show that cost creators can earn money for the courses that they create. And that, you know, it's a nice quick way of doing that. So, um, you know, it's a, a nice, uh, nice sales page here. But we always find the best way to test something out like this is to use the demo. And they have this demo site here at demo.learndash.com. And what you can do is view a demo site and it asks you for an email address here. So uh, I'm just going to put one in here. And uh, it says get instant access. So we'll just... Um, get that set up and what that will do is create as a, a sandbox environment which is essentially learn dash cloud you know a version of learn dash cloud that we can try and it should have all of the 
features on there, you know, WordPress, LearnDash, and uh, gives a sense of what we can do in, in LearnDash Cloud. So we can see we have a, a sandbox environment here. Um, it has WordPress updates here. So I didn't see before, but you know, like who who is responsible for keeping that up to date, whether that's Lindash Cloud or you, you know, like uh, if I, I probably won't try it, but if I was to update some of these plugins, um, it's just whether that's, you know, whether you do that as, as the owner of the site or whether LearnDash does that. I, I suspect that being part of a cloud platform, they would handle these potentially, uh, but that's that's potentially not, not clear here. But we have a site that looks like it has some test content already in there. So we've got a number of courses that we can preview here. And um, oh, it's got a nice set. Uh, so the courses themselves are showing you how to create the courses, which is good. So it's a you know, nice little bit of onboarding here where the demo courses on the site are actually teaching you how to create courses in LearnDash. So that's quite neat. But the fact that it's a um, you know, partly built platform is good because you can sort of see you know, if it was an empty platform with nothing there, then it would be slightly harder to, to figure out what you're trying to do. Whereas at least if you... Um, have something in here like this where you can see what's in there. You, if you go into it cold, you, um, you, you you get a better feel of, of what's possible in the platform. So there's a number of uh, test courses in there. It looks like we can up, you know, add, add things like post pages. Um, this is a, a slightly slimmed down menu set than you would get as a full site administrator from the looks of things. But you do still get access to things like permalinks and general settings. And interestingly, you can install plugins and themes. So let's have a look. You, know, you have, it looks like a sort of default setup of plugins, which I imagine come with LearnDash Cloud. So Cadence Blocks, um, I would imagine it's using the Cadence theme. So if we just switch across to that. Uh, yeah, so Cadence is a WordPress theme. It looks like that is the, the default pre-installed theme as part of LearnDash Cloud. And that's a nice theme, you know, like lots of people use that with LearnDash. It's a um, nice, nice visual theme. It's got some, you know, it, it, it works well with LearnDash in our experience. You know, it, it's good for LearnDash courses, as well as having a, a nice site that you can use to sell your courses as well. You know, you can create these nice, front pages with lots of big pictures and uh, it's, a, it's a good theme. So it's a good choice from LearnDash of a, of a base theme to use. But, you know, like we've got the option to switch to a theme. So if I wanted to switch to 2022, for example, let's give that a go and, you know, refresh this back end demo. Uh, did that switch? Anything like that? I'm not sure if I actually uh, changed the theme there when I when I changed that. So this is I've got 2022 active, but that still to me looks like. Um, oh no, it has changed. Yep. Um, yeah. Now we're in. Um, I don't know if that was cached. If I just opened the wrong tab or something, but yeah, you can see that we we can switch uh, switch themes here. So I'll switch back to the default theme, Cadence, and uh, yeah, we're back to uh, where we were there. And plugins is the interesting one. So, um, you know, we have these plugins installed. A lot of these are LearnDash and uh, LearnDash's own add-ons, so Certificate Builder, Course Grid, and things like this. Show IDs is, okay. Show IDs is a plugin that they come pre-installed, and what that does is show the host ID as one of the options here. And that's really useful um, for if you ever want to uh, reference a course ID or something like that, in a, potentially in a plugin. And so, you know, courses, I imagine, would have the same thing. So certain plugins and things and, and certain bits of 
learned that administration might require you to say, what is the idea of this course? And then what that plugin does is just give you a nice, easy way to find that, you know, rather than having to go into it and find it that way. So um, it's just a nice visual thing. So they've got some useful plugins there. This is sort of your your baseline of, of things that you would want to uh, set up a, uh, a Lendash site. A few of these relate to the theme. Advanced scripts, uh, looks like it offers you the option to uh, create your own custom scripts and styles so you can put in your own uh, CSS and, and JavaScript by the looks of things there. But we've got the option to add our own as well. So uh, if I go to add new, let's just check that we can add another plugin here. So um, I don't know, let's, let's just do something simple here and install classic editor if you wanted to. And that looks like that was a yeah, a success. We installed Classic Editor. I can activate it. And not that this is the, the best way of doing things anymore, but Classic Editor, if I now add a new course, it should be in the old style of editor. So remember the, uh, the old WYSIWYG editor before Gutenberg came in, we've now got that. So interesting that you can have plugins. That does leave things very flexible. You know, you, you, you could um, do a lot with your platform you could also potentially <laughs> cause a bit of damage if you installed a you know broken plugin or a, a non-reputable one so it's interesting to to see that because you know it's um if you install a plugin that broke the site or conflicted with another plugin how is that handled you know so you could have a plugin that completely breaks your site and you know throws a throws an error even in the admin panel and if that was the case as I understand, you would not have access to FTP or something like that to access the back, you know, the, the the server, the files, or anything like that. So, how would you roll that back or, or change that? Would that be something you have to contact Lindash support about? So, that's a that's a question we would have at this stage. Let's just check that you can upload plugins as well. So, uh, you know, we'll upload one of ours here just as a demo. And it seems to be working all right. And uh, yeah, you can activate that. So you've got the option to either use plugins from the WordPress repository um, as well as uploading plugins here. You know, so um, you know, it gives you a lot of lot of flexibility. And uh, yeah, you can you can do a lot with this. So you do have the flexibility to to tailor this quite a lot. Uh, so I think that's um, all we can see in the um, the demo site. You know, it looks it looks good. Um, you know, we, we think this will be a useful tool, particularly for people who don't have that that tech background. Um, so I think some of the the queries we would have uh, on this are mainly around the host thing, and and you know, how many users can it support? Can it can it scale? And um, you know, it's all very well offering it as twenty nine dollars a month, but yeah, surely if you're you're hitting you know tens of thousands of users on your platform particularly if you're getting lots of concurrent users will it fall over you know will it will it um and surely if if it's if it is able to support that then you'd expect that the cost would increase as well so it's, it's interesting that they've got that also where it's hosted so particularly people within the um european union have certain regulations as to where sites should be hosted and um you know Ideally, as I understand, as part of this GDPR, um, this should be hosted within the European Union, but it can be hosted elsewhere as long as they have you know, similar uh, levels of data protection that the European Union would expect. So, you know, just being transparent about where that is hosted and if it is compliant with GDPR will particularly be important for anyone within the EU and uh, even the UK, you know, like they still have some of these uh, regulations. I didn't see anything on the Learn-Dash site about if it's backed up as well. So what do you get in terms of backups? If if your site broke or if, it, if you needed to revert it back to a, an older state for any reason, if you got hacked or something like that, what happens there? Does Is that possible? Um, yeah, that, so that's something uh, I'm not too clear on. And again, who fixes it if it breaks? So if, 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 the, if you install a plugin and it breaks the site, is that, yeah, you know, do you have to get in touch with Lindash support to to um, 
you know, get that fixed? And is that something that they're going to be happy about? You know, if you break your site a few times, are they going to get a bit annoyed if you uh, keep doing it? And just going back to what I was looking at before, like who manages the updates? So, you know, as part of this, I, I could update my plugins and themes, but is that something that I would be expected to do? Or is that something that is comes as part of this sort of hands-free offering that they're, they're bringing here? And Vimeo, uh, video hosting, would, would that be allowed? So if I go to media, let's have a look and add new. I mean, <laughs> we've got a maximum upload size of two gig there. So um, whether or not you see that on actual Lindash cloud or whether that's just part of the sandbox, but you know, if you were hosting videos, for example, typically what we would recommend for our own you know, people we work with is that you would host it elsewhere uh, and uh, embed them in. But uh, could you, in theory, upload a video that's under two gig and serve that to a hundred people? And you know, would it support that? Would it, would that be allowed? So that's an um, interesting one. And um, the other thing is WooCommerce is you tend to get a lot of people who use WooCommerce with LearnDash. You know, just looking at the LearnDash Facebook group, it comes up a lot. So I see no reason why you wouldn't be able to install that, uh, but is that sort of um, expected and would that work well? I think out, you know, by default, you've got Lendash's own payment mechanisms. So uh, you, know, you can still set it up with Stripe and things like that you know, via the, the payments options here. But um, yeah, some people like to set up WooCommerce because it's a you know, slightly more complex checkout process and you can do quite a few more things with it. Another question we would have is if, if you've already got a LearnDash site, is there a means of migrating to LearnDash Cloud if you wanted to? You know, that, that's um, an interesting thought. You know, if, if you've been using the self-hosted option, but then you want to say, we actually like your LearnDash Cloud platform and we don't want to be more hands-off with it. Can we get our platform, you know, our current platform over there? Is that possible? Yeah, that's a, you know, a new one. And I think, um, we, when we when the plugin was released, we saw some concern over what this means for the LearnDash plugin itself. You know, will the LearnDash plugin become redundant, redundant over time? And as we understand it won't, I think um, what LearnDash have said is that LearnDash Cloud does and will always continue to use the LearnDash plugin as, at its core. So um, there's no plans to make, you know, give any priority to one or the other. You know, they're, they're both going to be products that you, you can buy and use and you know, different people will, will prefer to go down the different routes there. So we hope you find this useful. We think LearnDash Cloud is a really great product and I think it'll open up opportunities for people who aren't, don't necessarily have that technical background to be able to use LearnDash and its great features. And uh, we're excited to see where it goes. Obviously it's early days and I'm sure some of the questions that we've raised as part of this video will be answered in due course as the product develops over time. So if you did like this video, please give it a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts on LearnDash Cloud. So if you have any comments or questions, please use the comment form below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the Training Spark YouTube channel.